Hello everyone, welcome back. Last video, we load the CSV file into our PyTorch data loader. In this video, we will start build our neural network model. Recall we have four input feature per sample. We want to have one hidden layer, which has six hidden nodes. The output layer has three classes, and the labels are in integer encoding, where the order doesn't matter. Let's jump right back in. We want to define the variable called device. So this variable indicates do we using a GPU or do we using CPU to do the computation. So if torch CUDA is GPU is available, else we using CPU. There's no comma. Yep. Let's define our model. Iris. I call it uh, Iris neural network, and then it's from torch dot nn dot module. We have to implement two methods. One is the init. Another is the forward. So the forward method is doing the forward propagation. And then the init is the place we where we define our variable. So we want uh, one hidden layer and one output layer. So we have fully connected layer. And then it's a linear layer. The data set has four features. We want six nodes in our hidden layer. And then the second fully connected layer is also linear. So it has a six, we have six nodes in the hidden layer. And then we have three output labels. So in the forward, we want to pass it through. So I'm using ReLU as activation function. And then so we have model and uh, that's called iris. So we initiate the model and then we move our model to the device. So before we go any further, I like to run a small test. So the data loader is an iterator, so I'm um, with the iter and next method, I'm trying to access the tensor inside the data set. And then I move it into my GPU. I only pass um, five samples from the training set to device. And then I'm trying to compute the, my score by pass the samples into the model. Train data loader, that's a typo. Let's take a look. So, yep, indeed we have a 5 by 3 matrix. And then it's inside the GPU right now. We success to create our first model. So in the next step, I want to define two blocks. One is the back propagation block. Another one is the evaluation block. So I like to separate it into two methods. So in the back propagation method, we want to set the model into train mode. And then we iterate through the data loader, move both x and y to GPU, get 
add the batch size. Mm. Okay, I'm missing the loss function and uh, the optimizer. So I like to add my um, loss function and optimizer here. By press A, you end in a new cell above the current cell. Loss function is neural network. I'm using the cross entropy loss. So the cross entropy loss is a combination of log softmax and uh, negative log likelihood loss function. So that's the reason I don't have the um, softmax at the end of our layer. And then we have optimizer torch optim. I'm, I'm using ADEM and then we pass the parameters from the model. Let's set the learning rate to 0 0.01 and then give it a weight decay 0 0.01. So that's good. So in here every time when you're trying to update your parameters inside the model you want to reset your gradient so zero grade and then compute the score and then compute the loss which based on the score and the label and then from the loss, call backward to compute the gradient, and then using the optimizer to update the parameters. So basically, I want to find which one is the max, keep the dimension, keep dimension true. So the number of correct predictions is the predictions equal to so we want to view as same as the prediction. Sum it up, and then I'm calling the item um, function to return from GPU into a scalar value. And I'm trying to compute the accuracy. I'm doing it this way because it only has one batch. So let's write our evaluation method. It's the same except the, the update parameter part. So this torch, we don't need the gradient at all. There's no update going on. So we could set the torch to no gradient to speed up the process a little bit. So instead of using the train loader, I'm using the test data loader, and then I'm pretty much doing the same. So let's copy it down. So we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. And then anything else are the same. And then we want to return the same thing. So once we have the uh, back propagation function and then the evaluation function build, then we could just run multiple iterations. So let's define the maximum epoch you want to run. Let's run five iterations. Epoch in range of 
we have a train loss and then train accuracy from train method and then we have the evaluate loss and then evaluate accuracy from e evaluate method and then let's print some um, useful information so um, just beware when you train the data you don't use the test set during the training so the evaluation block is only for display purpose so I'm trying to format the um, string this way but it's if you think it's a little bit too long you can just use the string dot format um, function um, keep four decimal place here we have uh, accuracy I like multiplied by 100 and then only keeping two decimal place and uh, mm, you know what I think it's too long so let's let's do it the let's use in the format way yeah let's run it so um, we can see the accuracy done in queries but then we can see the loss is actually decreasing so which is a good sign if every label uh, have same probability then the expected log will be number pi uh, will be log of the number of labels so um, 1.09 is the expected loss which is uh, um, is the expected uh, initial loss which is quite similar to what we have here so all we have to do is trying to run more epochs so after 100 epoch let's see um, how far we can get so we got 98 percent on the test set and then 95 percent on the train set so what I usually do is I try to copy down the last line and then copy down the um, loss for the first line and then run the entire thing again so of course we have different values so because we because in the first iteration we already run it uh, five epochs so basically they will keep the result from previous train so we basically run um, 105 epochs just run it again take a look let's recap what we have written so far use the library you're familiar with to pre-process the data. There's no fit method, so you can design a pipeline to fit your need. For example, you don't need to evaluate the test set during the training. In classification problem with label encoding, use log soft max on the last output layer, and negative log likelihood function compute the loss. Soft max does not work with NLL loss, so if you want to output the prediction, you have to write a separate function in your model class. The cross entropy loss combined log softmax and negative log likelihood together into one function. For optimization, stochastic gradient descent and ADM both work fine. If you want L2 norm penalty in your loss function, you can assign a weight decay larger than zero. I hope you learned something. Thank you.